climbing with Matt and Taylor it has been a blast. It's just fun to have like the the squad energy, you know. You know, like there's that saying like you can learn something from anybody. The importance of tenacity and limit bouldering and that really only comes from the examples like Taylor and like Ethan that have been doing that for years. Yeah, obviously Matt and Taylor are like super impressive. Climbing with Matt and Ethan's been really fun. And it's like, those are two of the best rock climbers in the world. I feel like they're two very different climbers. Matt seems to be really strength oriented. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Yeah, dude. Good job. Come on. <laughs> yes, let's go. Dude. Seems like a lot of like, his approach towards climbing comes through like training strength. Yeah, like if he feels <laughs> like he's not strong enough to do a move, I've heard him say like, oh, maybe I could like work on this and the training wise and then come back to this boulder. Matt is like very meticulous with his mental preparation before he pulls onto a boulder. You know, he like wants to feel all the holds that he can from the ground exactly where all his fingers go. Usually I go in and I try to gather as much information on the boulder as I can. And kind of get as much beta before he leaves on like a flash attempt or before he, you know, pulls on to, to try moves on a project. Sometimes I don't even know what my approach is. I think that it's been evolving and changing, I think for the better, uh, especially the last year. Matt definitely seems to be like, he'd take a little bit, maybe a smarter approach. He generally eats healthier than I do. A Big Mac, a large fry, Oreo McFlurry. Yeah, I got Domino's for dinner. I think there's a lot that people don't see that goes into like why he has been successful. First ascents are kind of difficult. It can be really mentally taxing to put chalk on an unchalked face and, and say like, okay, I, I believe this is possible. I'm gonna invest some time, energy, chalk, skin to this boulder that might not even be possible. Oh, it was super fun to try Blood Eagle with Matt. Blood Eagle, that was pretty special because that's something that Taylor and I worked on together. It was nice to like try it with someone who has maybe like a different climbing style than me. We just got right to work. We worked on one sequence that just wasn't working for me. I like sort of immediately noticed that like you can get this pretty wide position and do this big cross jump. Let's just see if it goes and he got really close on his first go, doing it this other way that I thought would be impossible. And that was just like what, you know, that was what I saw. And then Taylor did the move on his second go, which like linked from the start to where we knew it would be possible above that. So that was pretty inspiring. And then it was just like, okay, let's get after it. Like all the moves go.
I found a beta. I couldn't send the bowler, but I was able to find a sequence to help Matt get it done. <laughs> you know, I'm just like Rodzilla. We've watched a lot of Last Dance this week, yeah. I get a lot of inspiration from it. The win at all costs, like, just the determination is inspiring, for sure. Taylor's approach. <laughs> Taylor's a little more complicated, though. <laughs> In his approach. With the wet ass pizza. <laughs> you guys check with your family first. I, saw, I know Bruce did. Uh, the thing that I like the most about climbing is like the puzzle. It seems like Taylor is pretty good at like trying really hard right off the bat. If he has his eyes set on a project, he's gonna go back until it's done. And maybe that's like the young, the young southerner in him is just like able to just like pull on and just uh, give it 100% right off the bat. It definitely seems like more fun to, to go through the process of like figuring out a boulder and unlocking moves and then it's like when you come up with a solution for one thing, it maybe creates a problem on another move that then you now have to solve this problem and then it all just sort of meshes together until you have like a workable sequence and that's like definitely the most exciting part about climbing for me is like that puzzle. I, I really admired his approach on the, the squeeze project in the Kanye goalie. I had a pretty hard time on the boulder. I went up the first day and the hike was pretty hard. We got once again sandbagged by ice. I heard no bushwhacking several times. He took us on a, a far hike, but he probably took us about the worst way possible to get to the boulder. <laughs> professional. I was kind of like not hyped after the hike. Time that we hiked wasn't the problem. <laughs> I felt the holds on that and I was like damn these aren't even holds. I was kind of haggard. None of us wanted to do the hike again. I was the only one who was even psyched to climb that day. It's weird and my butt hurts. It's like time to either wrap this up or move on so and he started putting chalk on it and getting really hyped. It almost got me psyched, almost. I think I want this one. This oh, one's okay. weird. And my mind was like, well, we're not coming back. I have to do this boulder today or I'm not gonna do it. So I tried very hard. I ended up not doing the boulder. We had to come back. When we came back, I straight up just couldn't do the moves I was doing before because I had really bad beta and the moves were too hard. I'm fucking tired, Joel. Heck, might be fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it feels harder than the other day. Yeah. But I was able to sort of focus in and with help from Jimmy. We found a better sequence to do the beginning. Finding that sequence kind of unlocked the boulder. Like I could do the first two moves? Yeah. It's like a slap. Slap. Juke Day three on what is now Snowflake. Turned 30 yesterday. Maybe drank a little bit. I kind of thought that maybe if I if I just like tried really hard on the hike and just pushed myself and like got that good sweat going that it might like wake me out of my slumber or something. <laughs> uh, I think it did the opposite. I got up there and kind of I didn't feel very good. It's way warmer though. Even here, it's warmer than it was the other day. There's no wind. Tight tape. Tension, tension, tension. Let's go, tape. Deep breath, stop. Come on. Let's go. Yes. Come on, Tay. Let's go, dude. Come on. Come on. Yes. Fucking have it. Yes. Ah! Yes! Ah! Oh, you little bitch! Yes! Oh, yes! Yes! 
I still was able to do the boulder, and I think most of that was because of what I did last time I was here. I just kind of had to have that moment. Anybody can have a moment. combination of the three of us and each of us having sort of our own different approach, we're all able to kind of draw inspiration and like beta from each other. I definitely really nice admire Ethan's approach to projecting. Fuck me up <laughs> you go, I love my knee bar pants. <laughs> I mean, Ethan's inspiring in a lot of ways, uh, include, and that includes his fashion choices. So. <laughs> I like to get to the rocks, put on all my clothes, and um, do stuff like this, you know, like pick up, pick up rocks off the ground. Let me try to climb on something. When I was 17 and I was living in Vegas for my senior year of high school, I was definitely more open to just like the possibilities without any expectations. I sort of approached everything like it was impossible for me. And I think like having such a low bar, it was easier to exceed my expectations, obviously. He's really tenacious. When he really sets his eyes on his goal, he'll go out as many days as it takes to get it done. And that's been pretty inspiring to like what Ethan's approach is and just like putting in the work to doing the boulder. It's been uh, climbing hard on his projects and putting in that time and effort and it really shows uh, with things like Clockwork Orange, classic climb and craft. On you really good, come dude. On, come Matt. on, Matt. Come on. Ooh. And something else like a Wet Dream, probably my favorite boulder I've done in the whole country. The boulders that he put up back when he was a child are like the test pieces of the area now. Like doing Wet Dream is like a rite of passage for Red Rocks and he put that boulder up at 17 years old, which is just wild. Nice. Now, it's, you know, I have much higher expectations of myself and um, it's easier to be disappointed, but I just try to like keep that in mind. I try to notice that and be like, it's okay, you know, just small goals and um, just out here to have fun and be curious about what I can do. Make it feel easier 17 years ago. Good. It's a ball. I took that personally. <laughs>